Hi all, thanks for joining today. My name's Evan. I'm here to talk about the evolution of the Nextflow workflow management system. And just to start off, this talk was put together uh, with myself, along with Kevin Sayers and Paolo Di Tommaso. So at Sakira Labs, we are the creators and the developers of Nextflow. Um, and Nextflow is a workflow management system. It's open source, um, un available under Apache 2.0. And we're really focused on data analysis pipelines or workflow management systems. What are these? Well, typically in an analysis, uh, we have a series of steps. We have a series of software which we have to run and data has to be passed from one step to another. And you can see in this example here, a very kind of idealized view of what a workflow or a, a data pipeline is. And this is an example for, for variant calling. And we can see that we have a series of software, data flows through this, and then we get some report out of it. But the fact is in reality, instead of looking like this idealized view, in, in reality, we typically have something more akin to this, which is a, this is a parasite genome annotation uh, pipeline. And here you can see the individual steps. Each one of those circles is a piece of software uh, or a script, and you can see how data um, is passed from each step. And these things become obviously incredibly complex. So we created Nextflow originally um, back 2013, and we saw some common problems that people were having, and we essentially went to solve them, um, as, as you do. So data analysis pipelines, um, what do we see? So typically now we have all larger uh, amounts of data. So the data sizes, the data sets that we have are, are becoming larger. And what we observe is that we can parallelize this data uh, execution. So this means that we can split up our jobs into tasks, and run them in a distributed manner over cloud or on cluster. Typically, we have a mashup of different tools. So this means that I could take a script, um, which I've written myself. I could download something from GitHub. I could even have something proprietary. And I have this mashup of all of these different um, tools that I need to pull together into my workflow. And from this, it creates uh, some issues around how we can manage the dependencies. How can you install that? How can you make that system um, portable? And then obviously related to that, they have different resource requirements in these data analysis pipelines. So some steps may be very um, CPU intensive and other steps we want tons of memory um, to be able to, to run through. So with Nextflow, we're trying to solve a few issues. First up we looked at was reproducibility. So can you make your analysis reproducible and replicable? Can you make it portable so that that could be um, run on different platforms? Can you make it scalable where I can start with a small data set develop my pipeline on my laptop and then scale it out into cluster and cloud as required. We are interested in making the pipelines validated, so making sure that they have some kind of conformance to some standard and also making them usable, not just by the developer of the workflow themselves, but can these pipelines be used by um, other members and research teams or also all the way up to systems themselves? Can we integrate these pipelines um, using APIs into kind of broader systems? So what is Nextflow? Nextflow is both a uh, it's, it's a programming language or a DSL, and it's also a runtime. So you write code in any language, you wrap up the dependencies with containers, and you pull all of these processes together using Dataflow uh, programming model. We have version control on the scripts, and then essentially you can run Nextflow scripts then, or Nextflow workflows, on the various different platforms. So there's support for AWS, for, for Google Cloud, um, and around 10 of the most popular uh, traditional batch schedulers. How does it work? Well, you have a, a custom DSL, so this is a domain-specific language, which is written on top of Groovy. This allows us to uh, use the syntax to develop very quick pipelines um, and simply iterate on them. But then for the corner cases, we're able to access the underlying programming language that we needed. Nextflow uses a, uh, a, a functional-like programming model. So this is uh, the Dataflow programming. It allows us to parallelize our, um, our workflows implicitly. We also have a self-contained approach. This means that every task um, is, has its own working directory and it can be thought of as a container job. Well, it substitutes very well into that. And we have a portable uh, deployments. We really have a very clear separation between the workflow logic or the workflow itself and then the deployment of that, the configuration. And this is really key to Nextflow is keeping these two things separate um, which really provides you with the ability to create very portable workflows. So that's the basic components of Nextflow. 
And as it's evolved over the years, one of the more requested features is to add the ability to modularize the workflow definition. So this means to use independent components that we can reuse in separate workflow projects. So we want to essentially break our monolithic Nextflow scripts down into components that can be reused. So this was a particularly challenging task in Nextflow as it's really, really originally designed to express a pipeline execution flow as a sequence of tasks, which we call processes. So in these processes, the respective inputs and outputs are declared implicitly and they define a task dependency. So let's consider um, a basic example here of a bioinformatics task. We have BWAMM, which we're piping to SAM tools here. If we consider a Nextflow task example here, this is an aligned sample. You can see here that we have um, what we call channels. So we're defining the input and the output. And what's happening is that the process definition implicitly determines how the process connects to the remainder of the workflow. So these channels are connecting the next steps of the workflow. How does that look? Consider here, you can see the output here of the align sample becomes the input of the index sample process here. So you can see how this becomes difficult to then separate these parts out because they're implicitly linked. So DSL2 is a major revision of the Nextflow DSL. It's focused on pipeline modularization, component reuse, and a very fluent definition of recurrent implementation patterns. So we've really worked with the community over nearly two years now to make it a really satisfying user experience. We're very excited to announce that as of today, DSL2 is now a stable feature as part of the Nextflow 20.7 release. If you've ever used Nextflow before, you should find DSL2 to be a natural extension with very little changes. In order to keep the backwards compatibility with the existing code, new syntax needs to be enabled at the beginning of your Nextflow script with the following declaration, nextflow.enabledsl2. A Nextflow module is not anything more than a usual Nextflow script containing one or more process definitions, but with an important difference. The process does not require the need to declare from and into components that we use to define the channel from where the process was receiving the data and where it was sending it to, the produced output here. This makes the process definition now not tied to a specific data flow channel, and therefore we can use it as an independent component. This process can now be incorporated into another Nextflow script using the include statement. Once the process components have been imported as modules, they can be used as custom functions where they receive the declared input, these are channels, as arguments now, and continuing the same usual data flow semantics typical of a Nextflow programming environment. If we look at the example here, we define a transcriptome as a parameter, we define some reads, and now we're able to call the individual components, the index, the fastqc, and the quant processes inside this workflow definition. Note how the process modules need to be invoked with a new workflow keyword. In the example, we can also see how read pairs channel can be used twice, both as an input for fastqc and the quant task. This looks natural and obvious. However, when considering this against the previous generation of the Nextflow language, this was not possible. When a channel was used multiple times, it had to be duplicated using the into operator. Moreover, note the use of the synthetic dot out channel to access the output of the index process. This syntax allows access and combining of processes without having to declare intermediate variables, and it makes the pipeline logic definition more fluent and readable. The new Nextflow DSL2 not only allows the inclusion of workflow tasks, but also of sub-workflows or complete workflow scripts. In other words, you can include a workflow into another workflow script and then can be used in any, as any other task. The only requirement is to clear the workflow with a name, for example, this workflow RNA-seq. The take blocks define the inputs that are expected by the sub-workflow, while the emit definition declares the outputs that are produced. Finally, the new DSL2 introduces the pipe operator, which allows for the composition of Nextflow channels, processes, and operators together in a seamlessly and expressive manner. Consider the following example. The from pipe channel 
is piped to split faster, which is a built-in operator whose result is then used as an input by the align process and the output is finally printed by the view operator. This syntax finally realizes the NextFlow vision of empowering developers to write complex data analysis applications with a simple but powerful language that mimics the expressiveness of the Unix pipe model, but at the same time makes it possible to handle complex data structures and patterns that are required for highly parallelized and distributed computational workflows. I'd like to switch gears now and move from Nextflow syntax, the language, more to the deployment. The deployment of Nextflow pipelines can be done on several different platforms. We have a local execution with or without containers where Nextflow runs on the host operating system, connects via local storage. We have a way of running Nextflow as a centralized orchestrator where Nextflow submits jobs to your cluster, uses NFS or shared file system. And also we have cloud execution of Nextflow. So with AWS Batch or Google Life Sciences, this has become extremely popular over the last um, couple of years. And here, each Nextflow task is submitted as a, as a batch API call, which is then um, as a managed service for pulling up the VMs with the correct resources um, and, and running the jobs in this manner. So we see Nextflow provides us with a powerful way of running in cloud and cluster, simplifies the use of containers. Over the years, we had requests for the higher level functions associated with the management of Nextflow pipelines. In response to this, in September of 2019, we released Nextflow Tower. Nextflow Tower is a full stack application for the management of Nextflow pipelines and the corresponding compute environments. With Nextflow Tower, we can monitor Nextflow pipelines that are running anywhere. You can launch a pipeline from your laptop it can be running in the cloud, and then you can monitor it on your cell phone. Nextflow Tower also provides us the ability to launch pipelines directly. We can create compute environments for AWS Batch or Google Life Sciences. And we also have the ability to create all of the cloud resources that are required for these environments. In this example, you can see we've just launched a pipeline into AWS Batch. And now we can, for example, create the cloud resources that are required. We can create compute environments, the support for batch and Google Life Sciences, with support for Kubernetes and the traditional batch schedulers as part of the, coming as part of the roadmap. We have support for credential management. This enables you to launch pipelines from any of the Git providers that you have, as well as the credentials required for the cloud resources. One of the visions with Nextflow is to really automate the process of execution of pipelines. One of the more recent features that we've added is pipeline actions. Pipeline actions allow us to have events which trigger the execution of a pipeline. These could be, for example, a git commit or a API call via a webhook. In this example here, creating a webhook that connects and created to a computer environment, we can then see via a call here that from this API, which would trigger the execution of that pipeline with those parameters. On that note, anything that you can do from the user interface can also be done via an API. The idea here is that users of all experience levels, whether you're simply running a pipeline in your lab or want to connect in your Nextflow pipelines to existing systems that you have, can all be accomplished using Tower. Upcoming features on the Nextflow Tower roadmap include the ability to build containers on the fly, to validate workflows, and also to dynamically allocate resources in the cloud. I'd like to finish up by discussing a few awesome community initiatives which have come about. Nextflow Tower has the ability to support NF launch forms, which have been created by NF Core. Nextflow Tower also has support for GA4GH in terms of both the WES API and the TES API. This allows the transparent deployment of all the platforms that are supported by Tower. The Nextflow community has grown in leaps and bounds over the last years. We're extremely thankful to all the hard work put in by so many individuals to really make the community a great place to work. Special mention must be made to NF Core for the standards and the pipelines that have been created, as well as the enterprises that have adopted Nextflow for their production workflows. Thank you very much for your time.